filled in heaven இந்த அருமையான வார்த்தைக்கு நன்றி மன்னாவை குறித்துக்கா நன்றி வார்த்தையின் மூலம் எங்களை போஷியமாப்பா எங்கள் உள்ளத்தை ஆண்டவரே மாற்றும் ட்ரான்ஸ்ஃபார்ம் மை ஹார்ட் அவர் ஹார்ட்ஸ் அவர் மைண்ட்ஸ் அவர் ஸ்பிரிட்ஸ் யூஸ் எவ்ரி பார்ட் ஆஃப் அவர் பீயிங் ஃபார் யுவர் க்ளோரி இன் ஜீசஸ் மை டி நேம் மீ ப்ரே ஏ மே லெட்ஸ் கிவ் த லோட் அ மை டி கிளாப் ஹால் ஹே லூ யுவர் காட் இஸ் எ குட் காட் டுடே வி வில் குயிக்லி கோ த்ரூ the heart of paul to early churches paul's heart because he is the role model for church planting and he planted in the mediterranean region even up to rome and he will he will pioneer the first century church plantations he makes three missionary trips and in the fourth missionary trip he will actually go to rome and be there for two years i think at least two years after two years history tells us that he was beheaded for wrong accusations you know whenever you plant something you want it to last long whenever you plant a church you want to give directions adhaal nam kodukra ovvoru aalochaneyume kadaisi varaikkum and the sabaikku பயனுள்ளதாக இருக்க வேண்டும் ஸோ வென் பால் ரைட்ஸ் அ லெட்டர் ஹி ரைட்ஸ் இன் சச் அ வே தட் ஓன்லி வாட் இஸ் எசென்ஷியல் ஃபார் த சர்ச் ஃபார் எக்ஸாம்பிள் திஸ் சர்ச் வி ஹவ் நைஸ் பில்டிங் நைஸ் எல்இடி நைஸ் டெலிவிஷன்ஸ் தெரின் ஹாவ் இன் தி ஃபர்ஸ்ட் சென்ச்சுரி அண்ட் த சர்ச் வாஸ் ஸ்டில் ஃப்ளரிஷிங் அண்ட் க்ரோவிங் so all of the things that we see today nice you know music with extra uh, you know light sound and light program is good but it is not really required we just have it because we have it because technology is available we want to bring some effective presentation but is it really needed for a church absolutely no it is not needed for the church because all the first century churches were planted without technology and planted the right way and it started influencing people and it started bringing many souls to the kingdom of god and when he writes a message a letter to the church he focuses on the essentials what is actually essential for our christian living for example like if i say sister you need a car in america you need a you need a car is essential yes you know you need a house most yeah most likely yeah it may be an essential thing you know you, there are some logistics that we need but there are but but those things you cannot find in the letters to churches never once paul will say you need a house you need a car you need a cell phone because those are logistics they're not real life we can live i used to live in a small hut we were very happy no cell phone no television no electricity with the only kerosene lamp or the seam and then so long just that enna uthi nalanju velak irukum adha patta vekkiradhu romba challenge kaalile endrichune that is my first job find the match box how do you find the match box when everything is dark so you somehow navigate and find the match box and then light this small little lamp and then study under that lamp for one or two hours until the daylight breaks so technology advances it took many years for us to to even light one put one one lamp an electric lamp my mother used to pump out water from the well using bulls you know the bulls the air water maadungala vechi and they were kavala erpa nu solvanga you know it tries to there is a, a kind of in a leather container it will go inside the well and then it will takes on a few liters or 50 liters of water and she used to sit on a rope and the rope will give enough pressure and the bulls will pull that forward and then uh, a certain amount of water will come out of the well and then pour outside on top and i asked my mom how did he do that no i enjoyed doing it she was very adventurous in those days and she did that even after marriage for some time so there are certain essential things we need in the church and we're going to focus on those essentials not all the glamorous things that we are used to or introduced to for example i'll give you one statistics 
statistically within the church i heard 50% of the marriages are breaking conventional in american um, statistics outside the church i understand is more than 50% but they say within the churches of america statistically our marriage survival rate is 50% so somewhere we missed teaching the essentials we focused on buildings we focused on the air conditioned rooms and chairs but we never or we even preached about you know growth entertainment jobs and visas you know businesses we preach all of that but because you did not we did not focus on the essentials i i right now i know a family everything is fine in the family everything is fine the mother is a, is a spirit filled tongue she can speak in tongues the children are asking the mother you know send your husband away send your husband away you'll get this much money here you'll get that much money there so they went to church and the church pastor said how can you are speaking in tongues you are supporting missions and you are coming up with this weird thought that you can get rid of your husband you're right here in dallas metroplex your spirit field you are supporting missions but you, your eyes is not open to the basics of the gospel so many people may go into church but we i think i believe that you know we have focused on all the paraphernalias of life and miss preaching on the essential now paul will focus to each church what is essential for christian living you first master the basics then comes all of those is good to have them but is not needed i can die without air conditioning i can live without air conditioning but i can't live without the family we can live without cars but we can't have a father mother in a separate city and the child is you know saying two days with mom three days with dad and even it happened in a pastor's family in american pastor's family so somewhere we miss the boat as they say we miss the essentials of christianity so when paul is writing to all these churches we'll see five churches or six he will focus on the most important thing in our life number one the message to the romans rome was well developed by the time of jesus is the largest empire survived very long and they were they were pioneers in roads that's why we say all roads lead to rome wherever they colonize they'll make roads exactly as it was in rome they will put governors like pilate was in in judea and they will put uh, uh, for every jurisdiction some governors herod was ruling in israel when jesus was born and he would try to kill the babies less than 2 years old so rome was well established after the greeks so what will you write to a highly civilized society will you tell them this is how you manage stock market this is how you manage wealth this is how you you know save for your family paul mentions none of those in every civilized society sin also increases more in well advanced countries like america sin abounds atheism is abounding fornication is abounding if you say we need to have a boys hostel in america they'll say why boys hostel just keep hostel you can go to all campuses you'll never find boys hostel and girls hostel some of you may not have been to campuses i've been to campuses there is no such concept like only men only women in american universities because they live in a very open liberal environment sin abounds in campuses why will you sell drugs in campuses why will you sell uh, prevent baby you know drugs that prevent babies in campuses because sin abounds in institutions 
and those are federally funded institutions private institutions and nobody questions them so when paul is writing to this highly civilized in roman 6 verse 6 know in this that our old man is crucified number one thing that you must do the romans is that the body of sin might be destroyed that we should not serve sin paul is focusing on holiness he said i really am not impressed with all this advancement in civilization but i'm more important i'm more focused on your holiness our old man should be crucified you should not serve sin and verse 7 he that is dead is freed from sin verse 11 reckon yourselves to be dead to sin but alive to god through christ our lord and verse 12 let not sin reign in your mortal body that you should obey it in the lust thereof every church should be focused on essentials nama vandu valamaga vaala vendum selipaga vaala vendum jabam pandrathu no problem it's not bad it's not it's not sinful to become prosperous but the, the essence of christianity is living without sin you commit sin every time you transgress a commandment transgression or disobedience to any commandment is sin sin is also described as missing the mark you didn't hit it on the right spot so god has standards and every time we miss the mark every time we disobey fornication is one that paul will iterate many times what is fornication fornication is people living together before marriage in america it is uh, it, it is allowed i i know people right now living 10 years and they are not get married christian people and paul is saying fornication should not even be mentioned then comes adultery is when married people not living together and having extra marital affairs and paul condemns both of them the church is supposed to be the body of christ i mean it's not the it's not an institution that federal government allows yes we are a registered approved non profit organization that's what the government thinks but in the bible our church is called the body of christ it has to have what does it mean a body of christ it has to depict or it has to have the attributes of christ when they see the body of christ they should see yeah this is the body of jesus christ that's that's what means body of christ we cannot have sin enter the body of christ or we cannot live in a lifestyle that brings shame to jesus christ you know jesus never committed a sin and he never con- approved sin he forgave sin but he never approved a voluptuous um why you rustic lifestyle he told that woman in adultery sin no more i'm not condemning you but from now on don't sin anymore jesus always focused on planting his seed in the body of christ he is holy and he wants the body of christ to be like that looking at all the things happening in the world i understand other religions have their own opinions but when people look at the church can they say this is body of christ because right now whenever we say church you be visualize there'll be a basilica there'll be a big cross there may be in can modern churches there'll be you know all these technological things old basilicas will have some statues that's how people think they don't see it as a, as a body of christ they don't see it as a holy place and we have missed because we focused on the wrong things romans 8:35 he says love for god should dominate everything he said what shall separate me from christ romans 8:35 shall tribulation shall distress persecution famine or nakedness or peril romans 8 the 38 says i'm persuaded neither death nor life nor angels nor principalities nor powers no money no position 
things present nor things to come verse 39 neither height nor depth nor any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of god so there has to be a love for god and paul is telling the romans you know nothing should separate you from the love of christ your job your position your status should not st- turn you from the love of god we are members of this one body romans 12 verse 4 we are many members in one body and this is a body that reflects the body of christ you know paul is writing about this body as a metaphor or analogy he says Yeah, our body is comprised of many members just like fingers and toes and nails we need all of them you know we need the ears we need the eyes without if the if the whole body is the eye then there's no body if the whole body is ears then there's no body ellame and the nadathil irundha dhaan nalladhu amen he said every part is needed in the church all of us are needed talents are good but they are not the essential things god needs you god needs all of us the sundaral dana idu poi enna irukku chuma cut panni potrala appo nam nenikka kudad this has power without that you cannot really hold this thumb as as greater power it without that you cannot really hold any object i cannot even hold the microphone properly we must say what is the use of the toenail the toenail is no not important i got to keep cutting the toenail because without the toenail you won't have you cannot put pressure when you run you need the strength from all the fingers because you you use the the front part of the leg when you run fast we don't run with heels the back part is not used much so we need all the fingers and all of us are part of this one body and all of us will have unique gifts and we are called to share the gifts for example verse romans 12 verse 6 he says if you have gifts use them for example having gifts differing according to the grace if it is prophecy prophesy let us prophesy according to the faith if it is ministry verse 7 let us wait on ministering if it's teaching let us teach and if it's exhortation verse eight let us exhort and let us teach let us rule with diligence let us share so nammudaiya thaalangal ellam sabaikku endru payanpaduthu vendum you know we have so many gifts so many talents we have to use them for the church so that is more important than our status quo than our accomplishments than our certifications than our degrees and be affectionate romans 12 verse 10 be affectionate to one another with brotherly love oruvar kurar anbu kaattum pilligala irukka venduma and honor in honor preferring one another you know so many times we see in the body of christ oru oruthru unnorthu patti thappa pesittirupanga one family may be wounded may be talks about other family but paul is saying you know when you are in a church be affectioned to one another be nice and kind and gentle to one another and with brotherly love and prefer one another that is more important you know god is not coming to a church which is with with a lot of money amen god is coming to a church which is purified sanctified by the blood of jesus a church that is purified washed by the blood of jesus when he comes we will not be judged by what we have we'll be judged by what we did with what god gave namba ambu kaatanum you know the greatest thing paul will tell in all this churches is are you loving am i loving am i affectionate am i caring for one another am i preferring one another you know i like churches but sometimes i don't like where where the pastor like me thinks that everybody should change and all the people should change but if i am blinded i may be just preaching and pointing 
to everyone and say you should change you should change you should change not knowing that i myself have to change in so many areas if you have to change in 10 areas i may have to change in 12 areas because we are all vessels of clay nobody is a perfect man we have different roles my role is different but we are all vessels of clay we are we have imperfections we have areas to improve all of us have areas to improve naan vandu maarvadharku onnu challenge onnum illa na fine appadi nenchumnaake then we are almost like nobody can help us we have that mindset that okay i am fine i am good that's called the blind spot nobody can change us because we think we are perfect mel and etna per irangi vandalum even if angels come we will think we are perfect we will say i am good so we will never change but we had asked god daily lord how can i become better how can i become a loving person how can i you know prefer one another in what area can i lend my love my time hallelujah amen paul is talking about attitudes Romans 12 was 14 he told the romans bless them and don't curse them yellow evening la aashirvadikka vendum think about you writing to the most civilized country in the world be of the same mind verse 16 be of the same mind to one another mind not high things but condescend to men of low estate do not be wise in your own conceit nee nenichadha right abdi nee irukka venda sila per pudicha mailukku moonu kaal dhaan irupanga nee illa pa na pudicha mailukku ellame moonu kaal we should always be open to correction amen amenable we should be pliable just like the potter can make the pot of any shape he wants god wants us to be that mold moldable clay so you say god mold me into a person that you want me to become if you want to be an evangelist mold me if you want to be an apologist make me an apologist if you want me to be a teacher make me an efficient spirit filled teacher because you are you may we may have just started your career there are miles to go and we should ask god lord how do i improve fast where am i lacking as i said two weeks ago an empty head is not good if our mind is empty it is not good because the bible says seek knowledge seek wisdom seek understanding from god from the word of god it is not good to be empty we should be filled with the knowledge of god should be filled with the love of god i mean the bible says just like you search for gold and precious silver you know you should search for wisdom and understanding and knowledge and when you search for it like that you will surely find the knowledge of god knowledge comes from the mouth of god proverbs it says knowledge comes from the mouth of god so nam katra kekra and there are so many things i don't understand but i want to learn hallelujah So Paul is saying don't think of too much about yourself be humble and condescend to men of low state do not be wise in your own conceit in verse 18 if possible live peaceably with all men you know this is one thing in the body of Christ you know we cannot make sometimes it's hard to live peaceably with all men but Paul is saying you should try if it is possible live peacefully ellor kitta nam samadhanama irukonu we should not have any enemies and when i thought about that i said that should you should have if you should not have enemies and if you did have it should be you should be your own enemy or i should be my own enemy meaning that i should self i should be my own self critic and you didn't do this one you could have prayed more john hendy you should have you could have done this better i should be my own kind of a positive enemy to myself but we should not have enemies we should not have anyone whom we cannot talk to in the church 
not only in this church or any church amen reconciliation jesus came to reconcile the world to himself if he reconciled the church to god through his blood how much more we should be reconciled to one another and that is real christianity how can we live without do not let the sun go down on the wrath kaalaila sanda potaka sayandra nightly we should reconcile that's what paul is saying live peaceably as we said yesterday all these things are possible only if we are filled with the spirit of god and the word of god and he's telling the romans in romans 14 whatever you do let it edify another 14 verse 19 let us therefore follow after the things which make for peace and things where with one may edify whatever we do namma saaptalen seri thoonganalen seri it should not make someone fall for example if you eat something offered to idols you know idols are nothing paul says they, they cannot actually affect you but if there's any other brother who saw who saw you eating a food that is offered to idols and if his faith is weakened then don't eat it in front of him why would you discourage a brother for whom christ died or weaken his faith so whatever we do edu senjalame it should edify edify one another now to the corinthians corinth was actually a very sinful city because he rebukes them for a man who had his father's wife so polygamy and adultery was evident and so paul is saying to the corinthians you know live according to the word of god and then he would actually de- define what is actually true love because some sometimes in america we don't know the definition of love love is a very generic term in in english ellathukum love nu solvanga you know it is very too inclusive but paul tells the corinthians you know if you really want to follow christ you know you should know what is real love and then he would define what is called i would say it is the best definition of love in the whole universe first corinthians 13 verse 1 he said even if you speak with tongues of angels without love we are just music or noise producing instruments you know this is so important in the body of christ because we always think that life is based on performance i should worship i should be a good worship leader i should be a good pastor i should go to mission trip i should go to cuba we think in terms of performance but god does not value us by performance he values us by how much we love people christianity is not okay i did all of these things i even gave a lot of money but god is having a different barometer of christian life he said if you speak with tongues of angels and then he says in the next verse if you have the all the gifts and mysteries and knowledge and even you can move mountains in the periya malaye paatha anga po apdina even if the mountain moved but if you did not have love paul is saying it's nothing so anbilama nama sabaye katta mudiyadhu enna da nama senjalume you are measured by love not by other accomplishments why wow, i went to the church you know it was so much light and sound you know it was, uh, the, the the kids were singing so nicely but if in that church if there's no love if husband and wife cannot live together if the children are not living with parents if the if the teen is saying i can't stay with my dad i need to go because they are saying i need to go when when did this idea came that we are like eagles you know american think like we are eagles eagles eppadina ke konjam vaisana onne konjam veli thallidnuma thanna onne adu keela ulumbodhu it will start flying again 
so that's how the eagles are training their kids i understand that eagles train their babies like that because they have to fly high and they got trained them to fly high but when is when did god say you have to train your kids like eagles 18 வயசு ஆன உடனே நீ தள்ளிடு அது எங்கே போனாலும் பரவாயில்ல மெக்டானல்ஸில் ஒர்க் பண்ணாலும் பரவாயில்ல நீ வால்மார்ட்டில் ஒர்க் பண்ணாலும் பரவாயில்ல அண்ட் த மூமெண்ட் ஹீ ஸ்டார்ட்ஸ் ஒர்க்கிங் யூ கான் ஸ்டடி அண்ட் தென் இஃப் ஹீ புட்ஸ் ஃபோர் இயர் கேப் பிட்வீன் த டைம் ஹி வாஸ் எயிட்டீன் அண்ட் தென் ஹி நெவர் கோஸ் டு காலேஜ் ஹி ஹஸ் லாஸ் த பியூட்டிஃபுல் த டைம் தட் யூனோ த பெஸ்ட் டைம் ஃபார் எஜுகேஷன் இஸ் வென் தே ஆர் யங் நாட் ஆஃப்டர் ஒர்க்கிங் இன் மண்டே இன் ருட்டீன் clockwise work in chick-fil-a and mcdonald's and walmart that's how society is like we push kids away from the house and then you learn by yourself so they learn by themselves certain good things also but they also learn how to smoke they also learn how to drink wine they also learn how to go with boyfriends and girlfriends because the parents said you manage your life i won't give money even for college you can ask american kids how many of them support kids education very few they say they should work that's why kids are working at night time and then studying in day time they are going to community colleges because they can't afford full tuition so they got to start somewhere low end low cost courses and then translate into a high end university later because they can't afford good education and all because we bought into the ideology that we should train our kids as eagles train their eaglets never looking into the scripture then paul is saying the parents have to die for kids not kids dying for parents the parents have to spend and also spend for their spirituality make sure they read bible write scriptures make sure they go to sunday school make sure they are they are really growing in the knowledge of god and really love them you know love is not buying to- buying toys appa unukku i'll buy a toy whatever toy you want i'll buy the toy industry has spoiled the american kids also 6 dollar potta nalla bible vaangala but to buy a toy truck it takes 20 dollars 30 dollars the fire truck or a tiny aeroplane we used to buy 6 dollars and then the kid says in the, in the i already we played with this within 2 hours a child says is boring daddy this one you bought i want southwest airlines you bought american airlines <laughs> when you go next time please buy a different one with automatic movement something so they will never be completely happy because the toys are they only fill little bit of their imagination and the kids won't go out to see the sunrise because they are embroiled in this virtual world the phones and gadgets to walk outside to see the sunrise to see the sunset or to even see the stars it is it is it is very difficult to push them so paul is saying even if you do all of those magics if you don't have love you are nothing and then verse 3 says if i give all my goods to feed the poor na neriya social work pandren i gave billions of dollars i gave millions of dollars but you don't have love you it profits me nothing so paul is writing to the corinthians what you accomplish doesn't matter without love everything crumbles when two people marry they give love commitment till lifetime balandalin says setalum sari vyadhi irundalum vyadhi illenalum sari i want to stay with you so in our mind the thought of separation should never come because if you read the magna carta of love i would say the greatest poem ever written by paul on love he said whatever you do doesn't matter love is more important 
and we will focus our energy on love. Hallelujah. Love, what is love? Again, he goes on to explain. He says in verse 4, it is suffers long. It's very kind. And we love at him sagikum. You know, it's not that you know our life is always happy, go lucky. We'll have we'll have tough times. That's not the time when you lose control. At least Paul is saying you should not lose control. He suffers long, it's always kind. He does not boast itself. In verse 7, it beareth all things, believeth all things, hopes all things, endureth all things. Sometimes I can find this in other people's religions. That is a little bit of it. But why I can't find in Christianity? You know, they, they manage, they, 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 by some social constructs, they have been taught that marriage is important. We should not be separated. A lot of Hindu families, because of the way they have been raised, they live together for long. But why Christian communities are now buying liberal concepts or, or not keeping the commandments of God? It's not easy to love the other person. It's not easy to be patient all the time. Can you bear everything, all the pain? One child, once a child comes, you know, you have a lot of logistical issues. You have to feed the baby, carry the baby, shopping, uh, I mean the stroller, and you have to keep track of the diapers, the milk. You know, there's, there's a heavily loaded tasks. But that's when... Paul says, can you bear all of this? Can you endure? True love endures all things. We cannot be screaming at each other. That cannot be a, a, a characteristic of a deeply loving Christian. <laughs> you know, if, if the wife is like that and, and the family is, we don't know when, when she will lose control. Then every day is going to be tough. And the same thing for husband. If the husband suddenly throws things, the, throws the tools, I say, I'm tired of this life. You know, I just... Feel like running away. Those words should never come. Love beareth all things. True love. You know, God bore all our sins on the cross. He forgave every sin. Not one, two. All our sins. He loved us even when we were wicked in our imaginations and thoughts. The Bible says we were wicked. But God said, I still love you. It endureth all things. So that was his letter to the Corinthians. And you can see in all of this, Paul is not focused on career. They are not important for marriage actually. Even now, even now in the 23rd to 2023, people ask for caste. Kadesia, is the caste in the Nalargo? And it is even among born again Christians, not just you know Catholics or the old traditional institutions. It's even Christian born again churches, pastors are asked. So, marriage breaks. Because you connected all the unwanted things. You made sure all the unwanted things are, yes. Years of gap, okay, she have, and she should be little, little, uh, shorter than the husband, that matched. She should be a little colorful, that matched. 
cast my everything mask one of my i think he's actually not christian he uh, the, the daddy said hey, come i'll get you married so he went there he saw the daddy said marry this and he he got married and then by morning 11 o'clock marriage evening 4 o'clock he took an auto went to the airport Nera straight to Arbat put that I'm fine you keep the girl with you <laughs> I don't like this she took a flight he came to california by agree they, they don't know god he's a hindu who can understand because they were looking at some stars or he he didn't the, the girl was not really beautiful so he told me those reasons but i said if you didn't like the girl you should have told you up front why you get married at 11 o'clock and then take an auto at 4 o'clock and then you come to california and join the work and then never talked to her for 3 2 3 years and then finally that girl got fed up and then she they uh, said okay this is not going to work out and he married another one and the, and that, the another one was very beautiful works for google and very beautiful lady extremely talented and all of a sudden the baby came and the, after baby came the in laws came problem started the girl didn't like to have the in-laws at home so he got this beautiful girl got this beautiful child also but there's a constant friction between the girl and his own dad and mom after some time the google girl she decided to stay in a separate apartment and he lives in a another house they bought together they bought together a house in, and then now they um, somehow shuffle the kids between two locations but i understand that they don't know god they don't know christ i understand even if i tell them they may not be able to fully comprehend but how can this happen in church how can the wife go to the pastor and say we want in this one because we have not learned true christian that paul was trying to emphasize he said christianity without love is but is is a, is a crap it's just a club an organization approved by government that's all it is without christ and without love of god working in you in all of these dimensions bearing believing hoping enduring how much we can love is there a limit to your patience you know sometimes we have this patience limit the blood pressure now they have some limit you know if we just go above this you know blood pressure is good or bad i still can't remember the range every time i go i got no which is the range but when it comes to patience we may have some uh, limits okay i can go only up to this limit maybe up to 100 after that i lose patience start throwing stuff breaking televisions but if love beareth all things if it endureth all things it means that your patience should be very long an ending patience can it is it is it possible the question is is it possible now adha modala vandha indha modala america vandha adha kelvi na is it possible to live like that like paul is saying in his message will finish with the message to the galatians the galatians thought that they can become righteous by works of law you know just by keeping some rules and regulations they can please god but galatians 2:16 a man is not justified by works but by faith in christ and the christianity you can we can even keep all commandments but still not walk according to god's plan or god's original purpose is possible to fulfill all 10 commandments by works of law but still kolai seyade na edume kolai seyala peradharathai virumbade adhe na pannala naan thiridavillai 
so i can keep all the 10 commandments but still fail in marriage in the galatians he said is not the works that matter is not you are not justified by works of the law but by faith your faith in christ and you are justified by the faith of christ not by works of the law for by the works of the law you cannot be justified no flesh can be justified in christ galatians 3:26 we are all children of god by faith in christ which means if a person who believes in christ we are part of this body of christ we are commanded to love that person even if he does not suit your our taste let's say you see african american avaru mudi epdiyadu irukum now i have one friend in in my workplace his hair is everywhere you know puffed up like that like a basket from nigeria then i when i talked to him and he was so loving and then he used to help me also i said i know uh, some pastors in nigeria and he used to um, you know igbo that's that's his language igbo so he is also a christian but if you you look at him with all this bucket like hair you may not feel like loving him and one more guy in in california his his hair was his, actually he was called elijah like elijah's hair yes so you know like even the women cannot have such hair so there's so much hair by if if they are children of god we should not treat differently amen by faith we are justified whether he is a plumber or a, a, a cto amen if they are children of god we should treat them the same we are not justified by works we are not justified by our accomplishments we are children of god because of faith in christ and verse 28 it says there is no jew nor greek neither born nor free neither male nor female for we are all one in christ you know talking to the galatians he said your social strata does not matter whether you are high class or low class whether you are a jew or a greek it does not matter to god whether you are a male or a female or if uh, um a bond servant or a free free man treat everyone the same we are all one one in christ and that's the church that he also said stop living in the flesh but start bearing the fruit galatians 5:22 he said The fruit of the spirit is love, joy, peace, long suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, verse 23 meekness and temperance. Against such there is no law. You know all the old testament there were just a guide. You know old testament is sometimes very cruel. Avan or kaiye vetna na ni avan kaiye vettu apdina Moses solra. It is very cruel. Avan kaala vadcha na ni avan kaala vadi fracture for fracture. An eye for an eye. and that was acceptable in the old under mosaic law but in the new testament everything changes because the old testament was trying to establish a society with some rules and guidelines but did not really achieve the purpose and so god has to come and give a new new set of guidelines he said if somebody slaps you on one cheek don't slap back just show the other one or pray for those who hurt you bless those who curse you and love your enemies meekness temperance said to the galatians you know you cannot be justified by mosaic law or oh, we kept all moses laws no nothing those that has doesn't work do we have the fruit of the spirit in galatians 5:20 idolatry witchcraft hatred variations emulations wrath strife seditions and heresies all of these should not be in our life he said the old man should die the old man should not come back 
you know if there is no love there is hatred or kudumbathil anbu illatti veruppu automatically ulla vandrum just like you turn on the light all darkness disappears so when love is there there is no hatred but when the light is off darkness automatically comes so if there is no love hatred is inevitable a person cannot be neutral so when we don't hate when we love there's an ambience that god wants us to live but when we remove love hatred is somewhere there somewhere hiding it's not vocalizing it kanavan nadu solla mataaru irundhalum there's some hatred maybe manavi she may not say it but there's little bit hatred that's why she she couldn't fully work together but paul is saying be filled with love remove all hatred idolatry witchcraft hatred variance emulation wrath kadumiyana kobam it's called uncontrolled anger should not be part of our life of course we don't drink we don't kill people like murders and drunkenness but we may be susceptible to certain works of the flesh and paul is saying get rid of everything replace it with the fruit of the spirit love joy and peace galatians 6 verse 2 he said bear one another's burdens and fulfill the law of christ ovvoru oru baalathai nam thookikondu poga venduma in galatians 6 verse 2 and fulfill the law of christ we have to carry one another's burdens i'm glad that all the precepts of st paul we can apply imagine if paul said everybody should have a house a christian should have a two cars it would have been very difficult for some of us to be qualified as a christian but i thank god we can fulfill all of those without any money amen bear one another's burdens you'll fulfill the law of christ and verse 3 says we'll finish with the next two verses if a man thinks himself to be something when he is nothing he deceiveth himself now maybe me na vandu periyalu nam nenikkakudadu no sometimes the pride is there we won't tell it but we think we are somebody and because of that thought we behave like that but we have to say god i am nothing that's what mary said mary said be it done to me according to your word i am nothing whatever you say let it happen this is a inherent pride you know sometimes they think they are something sometimes you may think we are knowledgeable but we may be very foolish for example if you ask me Uh, anything about a car engine i have not opened a car engine not fixed the car engine i i know how to take to the mechanic shop eda nalle mechanic shop ku ittu poyadha nammudi that's how we been trained because we didn't have car in india so i never drove cars there but if i think i'm an expert in car i'm deceiving myself if i th- if i think i'm very good in management but i can't handle people makkal vandave veruppu varudhu nee okkar you know sit down you get up you do this why didn't you do this this is an old management style it goes way back in india here you can't treat people like that we can't treat them like slaves say why did you do this why didn't you do this every day if you ask like that that guy will start filling the resume the next day or in fact i will do that arthnale poi nalla resume edit panni the manager or man at kormar enna panna enna panna adu ketta irundarna i'll say next month i'll be out of this campus they want to be part of your life they want the employee should enjoy working with you and that's why i'm 100% sure that a christian filled with the spirit of god is the best man for management because you can manage anybody any creepy individual you can manage because you have that love you have that patience and you can bear all things you can be an example well positioned for management we are we are the best for management so let's not deceive ourselves 
and verse 4 let every man prove his own work and then shall he have rejoicing in him alone not in another so everybody should focus on our work nammudi vela enna nammudi sabile namukku enna vela mathinga vela nala namukku vandu reward kadikka poradilla what he does he will get reward for that but what i do is what i will be rewarded and i don't need to talk about what other people are doing and every time i talk about other people one thing is sure it has zero value to my life amen that's why paul said avoid all corrupt communication because all communication corrupt communications has no value to our life i mean it has no value so why would we talk when that has no value i would rather focus on things that add value to my life hallelujah let's all stand we'll pray kangale mudi katran kekra lord make me a true christian fill with the gifts of the spirit or the fruit of the spirit st paul said to the ephesians be ye filled not with wine but with the spirit of god who gives produces all the fruit kagil the kekram pa any or paathramanga payanpadutha make me a, a wonderful vessel a golden vessel refined and purified for the master useful for the master remove self conceit and pride if i think i am something and i am not remove that vanity kagilotte kekla lord show me reality who am i and let my heart be bound by scriptures as martin luther once said he said i cannot recant my beliefs and writings because my conscience is held captive to the word of god our life is captive to the word of god our marriage is captive to the word of god the bible says husband is the head of the family wife submits to the husband that's a written word and our heart is captive bound to the word of god accept it lord help us to accept it and apply it thank you jesus kayyudhi kekla pa aviya nerappu mandavare balathinala malla parakrithana malla parasu thavina ellam koodu bible says with the spirit even he says to the philippians i can do all things through christ I can't be patient but through Christ I can be patient. I cannot bear but through Christ I can endure. I can't forgive but through Christ I can love my enemies. Because he forgave our mannithadanal naamu mannikka pogrom. Your heavenly father forgave us so we should forgive one another and love one another nam appa eppadi nam nesitharo adhe pondru ovvoru varin nam nesikka vendum thank you jesus jesus mighty name padale padala appa pidavi loving father Hey, hey, hey.
Restore the families. Hallelujah. The Lord will restore your family. The Lord will set it right. And may you be the body of Christ. Where love abounds, grace abounds. Katra Yesu Kisim Kribayum Pudava Yadevin Anbam Parasat Avi Naikulor Indrum என்றும் எப்பொழுதும் இருப்பதாக எல்லோரும் சேர்ந்தேன் ஆத்மாவே கத்திரை சோத்ரி உள்ளமே பரிசுத்த நாமத்தை சோத்ரி ஆத்மாவே கத்திரை சோத்ரி கத்தர் செய்த சகல நன்மைகளே மறவாது கத்தர் பெரிய கத்தில் கொடுப்போம் தேங்க்யூ ஃபார் காமிங் ஜாயின் பண்ண